Hello, welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Kate Harper and we're broadcasting today from the district, the 61st Legislative District in Montgomery County. I'm at the Senior Games at the Montgomery County Community College located in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. And we'll be talking to people who are here to compete in the Senior Games and also those who are here for the Senior Expo where we've brought together lots of people who have good information for seniors. So stay with us. My name is Taria Hudson. I am from Montgomery County Community Connections, where I'm the manager. And our, our organization acts as a front door to the human services that are offered through county government. But we also partner with uh, organizations throughout the community. So when people need to know where to turn to get services or access to resources, they can call one of our four offices and we can point them in the right direction ra rather than residents doing the research themselves. Can you give a variety of, like a listing of the variety of services that people might turn to you for? Absolutely. So we uh, deal with veterans affairs, aging and adult services. Uh, we've helped uh, link people with resources where they could find basic needs, help with utilities, uh, food, clothing, housing, um, transportation. Uh, behavioral health, drug and alcohol, we've got all of those resources. That sounds really great. Can you, if there's one thing that uh, you wanted folks to know here today, what would that be? And for folks that are watching. Uh, I think it's, uh, it, this is a great resource. Community Connections is a great resource and they can use it um, at any time for any Montgomery County resident. It's a free service. There are no income guidelines. So anyone who makes a dollar or a million dollars can call our service and get access to resources. Uh, and we've got um, access to, to different uh, resources that can help people meet their needs. And how can someone contact you? Uh, we have four different offices throughout the county, uh, but the easiest way is to go to www.montcopa.org slash community connections, and that's where all of our offices are listed, as well as our satellite locations where we are once a week. Well, we're here with the Honorable George Sourman, former state representative and mayor of Ambler. George was instrumental in getting the senior game started 30 years ago. And today he's competing in the softball throw. So how'd you do, George? Very poorly, but <laughs> I had to throw underhand. My shoulder's not good, so. But anyhow, it's fun. All right, well, there are good days and bad days, I guess, but I guess. could you? Tell the uh, viewers why you thought it was important to start the senior games. Well, we had the Keystone Games for years for state, and uh, I just felt that we should have something here in the county. And so, uh, uh, well, we got started with Sue Badger, and, and uh, she, I guess she got married and changed that name too. But anyhow, uh, that was the idea to get it started. And uh, all of the various, uh, or not all, but many of the recreation directors uh, became involved in it. And uh, actually here, uh, Brenninger at, the, at uh, the community college, all of them have just been wonderful in terms of keeping it going and, and keeping up the interest. And uh, they meet four or five times before the time and, and put a lot of time and effort into it. Right, it certainly is true that the uh, programs are largely run by the park and recreation directors from the townships around here. You mentioned Upper Dublin, also Whitpain participates and many of the others, and right. we couldn't do the games without the park and rec directors who can set it up. But what do you think about the size of the games? I think it's bigger than when you started. Oh yes, it's been increasing each year. And uh, they started a program to uh, bring a friend and I think that's helped to uh, spread the word. But uh, it, it's just, uh, well, some of the folks, I'm not sure now, last year, I think one of the original contestant was here, and I think she's been competing every year. 
every year she could anyhow. Right. It's, it's well, I think you're right about that. In fact, I recognize the people year after year, they come back. But you're a competitor. So what advice would you give a senior who's watching this and wants to come next year? Well, I think the, the important thing is just to compete and be a part of it. Uh, it the fellowship, the act, you know, every, activity is good for all of us, exercise, and it's one of those things. That, but this adds fun to it. And uh, so it's a great day, great week, actually, with all the other activities. And uh, I just think, again, that the, the people, that the, the directors from the townships and the volunteers have been continued to make it a program that's really worthwhile. And you'd no doubt be happy to know, former state rep George Sharman, that the legislative delegation from Montgomery County supports the games as well and helps out with the uh, volunteering today. Well, you're true, and they did. And in the beginning, actually, there was a lot of support and uh, with printing and things like that. Uh, and the activity, uh, it's just a good thing, I think, for legislators to do, too, right. to stay involved in, in the health and the activities of their constituents. Well, that's good. So that was State Representative George Sauerman, and we'll be going on to talk to some more competitors at the Montgomery County Senior Games. Hi, I'm Mimi Caruso. I am the Community Relations Coordinator for Senior Helpers, and we do personal in-home health care in Montgomery County area. So I guess by the name, is this seniors helping seniors or not necessarily? No, it's, uh, we ha all, all the employees are our employees, they're background checked, um, most of them are CNAs, and they're all different ages. What types of services would they provide in, in someone's home? We can uh, give you an hour to 24 hours, um, transportation to doctors, shopping, uh, clean your house, companionship, whatever the senior may need, washing, laundry, whatever. Why is it so important for seniors to stay in their home if possible? Because they've, they've been there most of their lives and they feel comfortable there and, and they're happier there. You know, they know the neighbors and they have their own routine and they don't like to change it. And um, if someone is interested in contacting you to get some more information, how would they do that? They can call 215-782-8500 and uh, talk to one of our representatives and they'd be more than happy to come out and do a free assessment. All right, I'm here with Pat Rock and Pat has competed and has also helped with the volunteer steering committee to get things going. So Pat, where do you live? I live in Dresher, okay. which is uh, Eastern Montgomery County. Now, I know where Dresher oh, is, okay, Pat, okay. <laughs> but I want to ask you, um, what do you like about the games and what about your own personal performance this week? I think I did well. I came back from a very serious car accident and I had a goal. And I'll tell you what the games do for me. I've been in the games for 23 years. The senior games have been a carrot for me to stay in great physical shape to compete every year. However, as I get older, maybe I'm not as good. So I've calmed down a little bit on the competition, happy with where I am. Love the reunion of all my friends, the fun, and oh my God, all the organizers, particularly Kurt and Phil Brady. Right. I, I can't go on. Brittany, I could go on for Courtney Cox. I could go on forever. All um, right. So, but let's talk a little bit about the competition, sure, Pat, because sure. you're actually an athlete and uh -huh. you're talking about having goals and yes. working out. So what is your sport? Well, my s sport is cycling. I used to do the traveling, but I had double knee, but uh, cycling and then swimming. And this week, did you do either of them? Yes, I did. And how'd you do? I think I did fine. All right, now what advice would you give to a person of your vintage who wanted to come out to the Senior Games next year and is afraid to give it a try? I'll bring them. I'll bring them. Uh, I did try to pr uh, promote it this year, and people are so scared. Oh, they think it's so. But we've got a lot of sports. We've got bocce. We have uh, pickleball, which, by the way, is harder than you think. Okay. Uh, we have the softball throw here so on the walk so there's a lot of things you can do that you don't have to be a super athlete the important thing is the camaraderie of meeting the people each year and saying i'm still in the game all right well i also think though that um 
you know, a lot of the folks here were athletes when they were younger, and they still have that competitive drive and competitive spirit. Would you say that's true? Oh, I think so. Oh, my God, it's swimming? Yes. <laughs> oh, my time was seven seconds better than the last time. Not me. I didn't say that. <laughs> but you know what I mean? But people are saying that. Oh, yes. All right. Now, do you think you're going to get any medals when we get to the awards luncheon? I hope so. I think so. All right. Good. Now, um, what is your favorite sport that you play here? Cycling. Uh, the bocce. Oh, the bocce is a, I don't know how to say it. It, it draws a 40 to 50 people. It's the fun of it. All right, now, Pat, my mother told me you never ask a lady her age, so I won't ask, but can you give us a range for the viewers who are watching? 70 to 80. Okay. And it's at 70 to 80, you're in great shape and you're having fun. Sipping up my stomach. And me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Okay. Are we connected on Facebook? It's easy to add my legislative news and community updates to your news feed. My page is at facebook.com slash rep Kate Harper. Once you're there, make sure to hit like and we'll be connected. I give you updates from Harrisburg, talk about what's happening in our community, and try to feature lots of photos of the great people in our district that I get to meet every day. Plus, it's a forum where you can share your viewpoints with me. Facebook really is a great way to keep in touch. Again, my page is at facebook.com slash rep Kate Harper. Once you're there, hit like and we'll be connected. Hope to see you online. Cynthia Crawford. I'm with the Women's Center of Montgomery County and what we do is we help women um, with uh, domestic violence issues. Um, what we do is give out resource information. We have a 24-hour hotline and um, the number to call is 800-773-2424. Uh, information is confidential and um, we also do legal advocacy as well as counseling. What is one of the toughest hurdles uh, when a woman is, is being abused or hurt by a loved one, what prevents them often from reaching out for help and what would you tell them? Well, basically what it is, uh, the, uh, the time uh, when a woman is trying to get away from her abuser is the most dangerous time in her life. So there are so many different reasons why women don't leave because that's the question. Why is it that she stays in that situation? Um, it could be economic reasons. Um, it could be that, you know, she just came over here uh, from another country and she doesn't have um, citizenship. It could be fear in general, um, fear on the level of emotional fear, physical being um, abused, um, that abuser could be stalking her, so she really doesn't have anyone to go. And then again, uh, she may have family members or friends that don't believe in her. That person may be someone in the community that's well known, and uh, she believes if she goes for help, no one will believe her and will turn her away. So those are some of the reasons that, you know, the women don't leave. And then also um, finding shelter for women, you know, when, they are, when they're uh, trying to get away from their abuser. And children, having children, that's another hurdle that, you know, we deal with on a daily basis. And what would you say to someone who's experiencing those type of feelings but really needs to get out of their situation? Well, basically what we do is we try to help them think of ways of keeping themselves safe, first of all. Uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, women have to do what is best for them, and they know better than anyone else what their situation is. So we don't give advice. We let them find their own way. Um, there is a saying that we use, which is, she is the, the, the captain of her own ship. She's the one who's in control of her own situation. She's the one that, that uh, drives the bus. So it sounds, you know, kind of cliche, but that's what we use as a, um, as a, a method of saying how she is in control of her situation. And we try to help her understand that she is in control because most of the times um, the women that we speak to, they feel like they have no hope. They're, they have uh, no control over the situation. Their abuser is the one that has the control. And that's what he 
helps her to think that she is powerless and he's the one that operates everything in her life. What would you say to a friend or a parent who suspects their, their friend or daughter or, or someone they love is being abused? What, should, what steps should they take? What they can do, first of all, is give us a call. Uh, we're here 24 hours to help them. We can um, give them some resource information available um, as far as lawyers, legal services, um, shelters that are available for them as well as um, some aid that's out there for financial situations when a woman has been abused based on that abuse. And also the, uh, the most important thing, protection order, because that's what we do. Are you looking for volunteers and what types of skills would they need? We're always looking for volunteers. We have uh, several centers throughout Montgomery County and um, if anyone is interested in volunteering, or if they have special services, they have um, special uh, training, lawyers, whomever, feel free to call us at that 800 number. We'll be happy to have you yeah, aboard on our team. Uh, yes, hi, my name's Ellen Evans, and I'm a partner at Master Care Home Care Solutions located in Flower Town. Hi, I'm Susan Cantor Pliese, and I'm also a partner at Master Care Solu Home Care Solutions. And tell us a little bit about what Master Care does. We're a non-medical home care business, so we try to keep people aging in their home. We provide transportation, non-medical home care, so it could be light housekeeping, light meal prep, uh, errands, transportation, doctor's visits. Really, we like to cater to the client's needs and the family's wishes, so we're kind of a concierge-type service. And how? what sets Master Care apart? We try to be different. We really think that this industry needs an overhaul with the baby boomers becoming 65 and older. This industry is really burgeoning. We feel that, that the home care workers have really been underserved and underutilized and we're trying to make life better for them as well as for the people we serve. And, and how would you say this generation is different? Um, I would say baby, baby boomers are a little more uh, active than seniors in the past. Is that correct? Uh, yes, they're very active and uh, they enjoy being a part of the community and getting out to events and that's what we're trying to help keep that lifestyle up and maintaining that. And how does aging in place and staying at home, how does that benefit both the person that's doing it, their family and, and even the community? I think people when they're in their home just have a different mindset. You're more comfortable. I think you stay more active and actually research has shown that people are more active when they can stay in their home and, and continue the lives that they've always led. And I think our elderly really provide an amazing um, part of our community with their, their history and their stories are really important to, to keep, in, keep in towns and keep, keep them alive. Do you take volunteers? Uh, at the current time, we don't have any volunteers. We just have full-time, two full-time CNAs, and then we have uh, registered nurses who are doing the uh, home inspections. Okay. If someone's interested in getting services, um, who would they contact, and how do they get a hold of you? They can contact either Ellen or I. They can call us at 267-422-6959 uh, or visit our website at mastercarehomecare.com or visit us and like us on Facebook, Mastercare HCS. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Did you know that Violet Oakley was the first female artist to receive a large commission for artwork done in a United States Capitol building? In 1902, Joseph Houston, designer and architect for the 3rd Harrisburg Capitol building, commissioned Violet Oakley to paint murals for the governor's reception room. He believed that Oakley's contribution would add interest to the building and act as an encouragement of women of the state. Prior to beginning her work for the Capitol, Oakley set out to England to conduct research for her murals. Upon return, she decided to center her artwork on William Penn and the founding of Pennsylvania. Oakley made sure that Penn's ideals of justice and peace could be seen throughout her work. In 1906, she completed 13 murals titled The Founding of the State of Liberty Spiritual and was placed in sequential order around the governor's reception room. These murals were some of the first to be installed in the Capitol. When Edwin Austin Abbey, another artist for the Capitol, died in 1911, Oakley was offered another opportunity to create murals for the unfinished Senate and Supreme Court chambers. 
Her work on the Senate murals, including International Understanding, was completed by 1919. Oakley then completed the Supreme Court murals, including the Divine Law, by 1927. Oakley is said to be the principal artist for the Capitol, with a total of 43 murals on display. She remains one of the greatest muralists in the United States. Now you know. Did you know that Act 16 of 1999 honors one of the greatest leaders in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives? The Matthew J. Ryan Legislative Office Building, once known as the Capitol Annex, is located next to the main Capitol building and honors the late Speaker of the House, Matthew J. Ryan. Those who visit this building will observe the magnificent architectural designs providing eloquence and grandeur to the building. Known as one of the greatest members in the history of the Pennsylvania State House, Matthew Ryan started his career in the legislature in 1963 and was elected Speaker in 1981. His charisma and knowledge will forever be reflected in the building now named after this great legislative leader. Now you know. All right, now I'm here with Jacqueline House Connect of Limerick Township, and she's also competed in the games before. What are your sports this year, Jacqueline? Uh, horseshoes, billards, darts, uh, bocce, uh, stationary bike, wow. softball throw, and football throw. All right, so of all those sports, what was your best one this year? Uh, horseshoes. And do you think you're going to medal in horseshoes? I did. You did already? What'd uh, you get? A bronze, but I I usually get the gold, but uh, I just, I was sick, and, and I just don't have the body strength that I, I couldn't. No I, excuses, Jacqueline. What are you going to do next year to get the gold? Practice more. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you advise people if they want to compete in the, in the senior games here in Montgomery County? Um, just go for it. Just go for it. All right. I think that's a good way to end this. Thanks for talking to All me. Right, thank you. My name is Daryl Martino. I'm with Gateway Health Plan. We are a Medicare Advantage program based out of uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Have been in business since 1992. Um, we provide uh, care for members for people who have chronic conditions. If they're diabetic, have any kind of Cardio, cardiac type issue, cardiovascular disease, uh, coronary artery disease, peripheral vascular disease, anything of that sort, and they have a Medicare card with parts A and B, they're eligible to enroll in our program all season long, all year long, I should say. So for those people who have low incomes, we also serve that constituency to allow them to be able to get access to benefits where they have to pay very low costs. Uh, zero premium plans that will allow them access to gym memberships, um, eye care, eye exams, zero co-pays for, for many of those, uh, eyeglasses up to $150 uh, per year uh, on certain plans, as well as free dentures. Uh, the free dentures is something that we feel as though is good for members because it allows them to be able to, to, to be able to continue to eat healthily, eat the kind of foods that they should be eating, um, getting the dentures once every five years. Um, the eye care is more so to, to look at their blood vessels and make sure that there are no eye diseases that's coming about, that they can catch them early. And many of our programs allow people to be able to have access to these benefits and get the, 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 the type of care that will allow them prevent to, to prevent these diseases from coming about. Um, many of our plans um, offer uh, no referrals. Uh, all of our plans have basically no referrals. So if they want to go see a doctor, get a second opinion, which I you know, tell people that's very, very important to be able to do, it gives them access to be able to do that. We're in 40 counties in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, southeastern Pennsylvania, Montgomery County, uh, Del uh, Delaware County, Chester, Montgomery, and Philadelphia. Um, yes, if someone wants to contact you, how do they contact you? 
Uh, very good. Uh, they can reach me. My phone number is 267 372 8733. Uh, my email address is dmartino at gatewayhealthplan.com. And we also can, you can go to our website, www.medicareassured.com, is another way to be able to reach our company and get more information in the many other different states that we're participating in as well. We're back at the Senior Expo, and I'm talking to Roseanne Strang from Transnet. What does Transnet do and, and uh, how can people get your services? Transnet provides transportation throughout Montgomery County. We have several different programs. The one that we're here today at the Expo, we're uh, promoting the Senior Shared Ride Program. Um, seniors can register through Transnet. They can travel throughout the county depending on where they live. And also it is a reduced fare transportation. They can go to our website, suburbantransit.org. They can click on the Shared Ride Program and they can print out an application for the program. Once they send it back to Transnet with proof of age, Transnet issues them an ID card and then they're ready to go. All right, now what kind of uh, trips can people take with Transnet? They can use it for any purpose. They can use it to go food shopping, visiting a friend, going out to dinner, to lunch, whatever their need may be, the hairdresser, any, any need that they may have that they don't have transportation for, then they can use Transnet. All right, now, do the, are there income and age limitations? There is no income criteria to meet, and with the shared ride program, they have to be over 65. All right, now, um, do a lot of people use your program? Yes, we have, throughout Montgomery County, we do over um, a million trips a year, wow. just for all of our programs, not only the shared ride, but all of our programs. We provide the service through six partners that are actually do the transportation in the county um, that are members of Transnet. All right, now give, give me an example of a typical ride. What kind of ride, do people call up and schedule this or how do they do it? They call Transnet, they either call the day before or two weeks ahead of time and they tell us if it's a doctor's appointment, what time their doctor appointment is. Our computer system will then figure out the time of the pickup, and we can relay that information to the senior. Also at that time, we can tell them what the cost will be. So in the suburbs, a lot of people are fearful about giving up their cars, but they probably shouldn't be driving. Can Transnet help with that? Absolutely, absolutely. You know that you don't have to sit at home. That's alternative transportation out there. Even if you're still driving and your car is in the shop getting repaired, you can use Transnet for that. All right, now, um, if, do you have to know something about computers to get Transnet? No, not at all. You just call Transnet. Our reservationists are at our office from Monday through Friday, uh, 7.30 to 3.30, to take your reservation. All right. Well, thank you very much, Roseanne Strang from Transnet. And uh, we will show on the screen a phone number and a website so that you can use Transnet if you need it. Well, that's all the time we have for today's program. I'm State Representative Kate Harper. If you have questions about anything you've seen or any state government, matter, just feel free to call me at my Bluebell office. The contact information will be shown on your screen in just a moment. Thanks for watching and join me again for Legislative Report.